Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about optimizing tidal volumes on the ventilator and we'll be using volume assist control to understand this. Normal tidal volume as we know is around 8 to 10 cc per kg ideal body weight. Thus in a 6 feet male the ideal body weight 80 kilos and the tidal volume is around 640 cc. How do we choose initial tidal volumes? We always start with 6 cc per kg and we follow low tidal volume ventilation strategy. However, in certain cases like drug overdose, low GCS, you may use 8 cc per kg ideal body weight. Anesthesia would sometimes use 8 to 10 cc per kg ideal body weight in their elective surgeries. We can use this table to figure out how much tidal volume do we need. We know that there is a significant mortality benefit in patients with ARDS. Also in patients who do not have ARDS, it reduces the progression of the two ARDS. It also reduces the development of pulmonary complications. Thus, low tidal volume should be used wherever applicable. This was the landmark trial in the year 2000. which compared 12 cc per kg with 6 cc per kg idle body weight and uh, targeting plateau pressures of less than 30 and uh, the lower tidal volume strategy had a higher survival compared to uh, those with hi higher tidal volumes so the mortality comparison was 31 percent versus 39.8 percent you can also see that breathing without assistance and number of vent free days were also significantly lower before we proceed, we'll talk about concept of PB lungs. You can review the article published in Intensive Care Medicine for further read. So we know that average weight of lungs is around 840 grams. However, in ARDS, only 200 to 500 grams of the lungs is aerated. So if you look at in this corresponding CT scan, the aeration in the normal CT scan is normal. However, in ARDS, the aeration is limited to much smaller volumes, as typically a dimension of a five to six year old child, hence the term baby lungs. If you use a tidal volume of 10 to 15 cc per kg in these patients, you are effectively giving them significantly higher um, tidal volumes as compared to the volume they really have. This results in overstretching and more lung injury. So what is ideal tidal volume on a vented patient? To understand this, we have to understand this pressure volume loops. And when you inspire, the, it is typically not a straight line, but it's an S-shaped curve. In the initial part of the inspiratory limb, up to the point which we call lower inflection point, there is recruitment of the alveoli the effective change in volume for change in pressure is relatively lower. However, once the, all the alveoli are recruited, you will see almost a straight relationship between pressure and volume curves. However, once you reach upper inflection point, you are entering the area of overstretching. This is the portion where your lungs are overinflated and encroaching upon the chest wall. This pressure typically corresponds to a plateau pressure around 30 centimeter of water. So the ideal tidal volume is the volume required to ventilate between the lower inflection point and the upper inflection point. On the same note, the ideal peep is the pressure required to recruit all the alveoli. How do you optimize your tidal volumes? We start with 6 cc per kg and perform an inspiratory pause to get a plateau pressure. And if the plateau pressures are more than 30, you decrease the tidal volumes. You repeat your inspiratory pause to calculate the new plateau pressures. And you keep on dropping the tidal volumes till the plateau pressure is either less than 30 or tidal volume which is around 4 cc per kg body weight. In morbidly obese patients, you can make an exception of accepting slightly higher plateau pressures as this has not been studied in this population. So how low can you go? Well, what there are problems associated with low tidal volumes, mostly with decreased alveolar ventilation. Thus, your carbon dioxide level uh, increases and subsequently drop in the pH. They can also result in some asynchrony, which we'll talk about in some other video. When you are dropping the tidal volumes, make sure that you monitor the 
CO2 and the two ways to do it is either measuring an entitled carbon dioxide or measuring PaCO2 on the AVG. So what can you do to reduce hypercapnia? The simplest answer would be to increase the respiratory rate which will make your minute ventilation go back to normal. Percentage increase in the rate would result in percentage drop in the PaCO2. So for example, if your respiratory rate was 20 and your PCO2 was 80 and you increase the respiratory rate from 20 to 25, which is increased by 25%, the PCO2 would drop by 25% as well. So how high can we go? Can we go up to 30, 40 respiratory rate? Remember, you need to exhale out everything that you inhaled. Once you start increasing the respiratory rate, the expiratory time drops. This patient has respiratory rate of 20 per minute and your inspiratory time is one second. So the breath cycle is around three seconds out of that. I is one second and the expiratory time was two seconds. Now you increase this rate from 20 to 30 per minute and you that the breath cycle is now two seconds. Your I time remains unchanged at one second. So your E time has dropped from two second to one second. So what is the problem with shorter expiratory time? Air trapping. The air trapping is going to generate some pressure inside your lungs, which we call auto peep. The shorter expiratory time occur in the alveoli, which are slow to deflate, seen in COPD. However, at a very fast respiratory rate, it can also be seen in a normal alveoli. So how do you increase the respiratory rate on the vent? The most important thing while you change the respiratory rate is to watch the flow time loop on the ventilator. So for example, this patient, the respiratory rate is 15. Flow reaches zero at this point of time. So you should be able to increase the respiratory rate to 20 while your flow is still reaching zero. This would result in complete exhalation still and uh, will not result in any auto peep. However, if you go up higher on the respiratory rates even further, you will see that the flow rates don't reach zero and there's a part of the air that is trapped that would be generating some pressure which will cause auto peep. What is the problem with auto peep? If we are taking two examples again, this patient has auto peep. The first thing the auto peep does is it increases the work of breathing. Because of increased positive pressure inside your thorax, you have to generate extra force to get the same tidal volume. It also results in decreased venous return for the similar reason. The blood flow to the right ventricle is decreased. You also get difficulty in triggering the ventilator and this is shown in this. This is a trigger at minus one. To get any air flowing, patient has to generate some force which would trigger this vent and this has to be triggered less than minus one. However, a patient with auto peep has to pull in quite a bit or with extra force. It increases the right ventricle off the road. These processes can result in both hemodynamic compromise and hypoxia. How do I know my patient has auto peep? I look at the flow time loop again and you will see that if the flow comes down to zero, you are not developing any auto peep as the ventilator flow like time loops are going to look pretty well where the flow reaches zero much before onset of inspiration. If you are auto peeping, flow does not reach zero and uh, some of the air is trapped causing auto peep. So in summary, you drop down the tidal volume to reach the plateau of 30, anticipating that the alveolar ventilation is going to decrease and thus you should be seeing some rise in uh, PaCO2. Rise in PaCO2 by itself is not bad but it will cause drop in the pH. Low pH up to a certain extent is not bad. In fact, your immune system works better in the lower pH and oxygen delivery is also better. However, severe drop in pH can result in hemodynamic instability. So to counter these, you have to increase the respiratory rate so that you can blow out the carbon dioxide that is retained because you went down on the tidal volumes. When you increase the rate, make sure that you watch for the auto peep. Make sure that patient exhalation is not affected. However, sometimes we do get stuck with sicker patients. Here, for example, you have decreased your tidal volumes to up to 4 cc per kg and your plateau pressures are barely around 30. You're, you do an ABZ and your PCO2 is uh, found to be pretty high and the pH is pretty low. 
So what you did was you rightly increased the respiratory rate. You are unable to fix all the drop in the pH and you have started having auto peep. So what are the things that you can do to improve your pH? You can give patients some extra time to exhale by increasing the expiratory time, thus decreasing the auto peep. You can achieve it by three methods. First thing is certainly you can drop your respiratory rates. So instead of 30, you might go down back to 25. However, your minute ventilation is going to drop down as well. And there are chances that your pH might get worse. The two other things that you can do, which can possibly help you more is increasing the inspiratory flow so that you, the time taken for inhalation is shortened. This extra time is added for the exhalation. Also changing the waveform can help you give some extra time for exhalation. For example, uh, if your tidal volume was 300 and your rates were 30, at 40 liters per minute flow, your eye time is around 0.45 second. If you increase the flow to 80 liters per minute, you decrease the eye time to 0.23 seconds. Changing your waveform from a descending wave to square waveform can give you some extra time towards exhalation. We use descending waves mostly because these are more comfortable and result in uh, lower peak pressures. Uh, however, they take some extra time to deliver the same volume as compared to the square waves. Lastly, if you have done everything and you are unable to make any dent, it's absolutely okay for the pcu 2 to be high if the pH is more than 7.15. In these cases, increasing the rate tidal volumes of the flows can be more deleterious than accepting a lower pH and you'll be surprised how well is hypercapnia tolerated. For example, if you have got an ABZ with a pH of 7.3 and PCU to 55, it's absolutely okay to not do any changes on the vent and let the pH be 7.3. Some of the deleterious effect of CO2 may be uh, in decreased cardiac contractility, cerebral vasodilation, and reduction of seizure thresholds. If you're really stuck and your patient still has very low pH and you've exhausted everything to correct the CO2, you can consider ECMO for CO2 removal. One of the common question asked is why not give some bicarb to these patients because my pH is low. I would suggest avoiding giving bicarb in these patients and the reason for this is you need the CO2 removal before your bicarb can combine with your H plus ion or acid, acid ions. If you are unable to remove the CO2, the reaction is not going to favor consumption of hydrogen ions. So in summary, you start at 6 cc per kg tidal volumes. You check the plateau pressures and keep on dropping the volumes till your plateau pressures are less than 30 centimeters. You're watching for hypercapnia while you are doing this and you are looking at your flow time loops as well. If you are running into problem with hypercapnia, you increase the respiratory rate and while you are doing that, you are observing for auto peep. If you are running into problem of auto peep, try to change the flow rates or change the waveform to see if you can give some extra time for that air to be exhaled out. If you cannot correct the hypercapnia, uh, do not increase the tidal volume or rate, uh, except a lower PaCO2 if pH is more than 7.15. In difficult situations, you can certainly take aid of uh, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation for CO2 removal. Thank you.